So, you've uh, beaten MTW, the big favorite, I think, uh, for the victory in that group. When you came here, did you expect to perform that well? Uh, we came in thinking we had a chance. Um, we definitely didn't think we were going to beat MTW that badly, um, especially coming off a 27-3 loss versus Rocket. Um, we picked a really bad map versus Rocket. That was my fault. But um, yeah, we definitely didn't expect to beat MTW like that. We were uh, really excited when we won. <laughs> so what was the key to your victory in that game? Uh, we had a really strong CT side, which is usually our uh, weak side on Dust2. I think we won 8-7. We got up early, so uh, that really helped us give, uh, get a lot of confidence coming into the second half. And uh, we got a lucky Deagle, Deagle Eco versus them, so that, uh, that helped a lot too. I asked Sun about the game, and uh, he told me he didn't think you'd progress any further in the playoffs. So what do you think about that? Uh, we made it hard on ourselves, second in the group. I think we'll probably play SK or MYM, somebody like that coming up. So uh, it's an uphill battle, but I mean, I think we have a chance. I think we can do it. Um, if we can beat MTW, we got to come in with some confidence. So let's go out there and let the chips fall where they do. So, What about your team? Uh, the very interesting thing about it is the name, I think. How did you come up with Paragon of Virtue? What, what's up with that? Um, I think uh, me and the current manager, we started it four or five years ago. Um, I was in English class, and one of our words was Paragon. So uh, we thought about using that. Um, I went to dictionary.com to tell him the meaning, and it turned out that Paragon of Virtue was an example. And I don't know, I guess at the time we were in high school, we were retarded. We liked it, so uh, it kind of stuck, and we're using it for now. So so what kind of virtues do you have as a team? Um, we definitely always try to have a family mentality. We try to always build each other up um, online, in real life, all the time. Um, we try to be, you know, professional and respectful to the other teams. That's sort of what we kind of bring into the game. So, um, yeah, I think we do an okay job at it. So, see if we can keep up, keep that mentality going throughout the tournament. The American Counter-Strike scene, is it is it good to prepare for such a tournament? Because obviously there's differences in uh, geography. People living at the East Coast, West Coast, it's probably difficult to find someone to uh, train against, right? Yeah, it's, it's actually quite hard because all the top teams, Mob, x EG, all have West Coast players. So for an East Coast team like ourselves, we usually play on Texas, which is kind of in the middle of America. So it's usually 40, 50, 60 ping playing against them. So it's it's a bit different coming to land with three or four ping, but it might help because you don't have as much recoil. But I mean, we still usually have really good teams to play against for the most part before a tournament. So it works out well. Do you feel like uh, playing at home, even though you've traveled uh, across the whole country? Uh, we had a lot of problems setting up initially. We had uh, some computer problems and some internet problems, but once we got fixed, uh, it was really nice. MK Pro on our team said he liked it more than his home setup, so it's actually you know it's a really good setup here. Um, so yeah, we're happy with it definitely. Are you all planning an esports career, or is this rather a fun free time activity? Uh, most of us do it as a hobby. Uh, I'm in school for time, uh, school full time at university. Um, Hero works full time. Um, and Mike also goes to school, so it's kind of just a, kind of a hobby, kind of a passion for us. It's not really a full-time thing, but I mean, I think there's definite pe definitely people like Savior and Ninespot that would love to pursue it full-time, so I guess we'll just have to see where it goes. You're already in the money ranks. Do you... Uh, yes, I think uh, first aid get paid. So you don't even know uh, <laughs> what kind of money do you get. So if you uh, get some money, what are you going to do with it? Um, all my money I'm giving to Savior, um, and I think we all pretty much will. Um, because he's got some loans to pay off for school that he's going to, so we'll definitely help him out. Um, Hero's rich already, so I don't know what he's going to do, but um, I don't know. If we want a lot of money, maybe a uh, Swedish boot camp, so we could actually be good on a consistent basis. Okay. So you're going to give your money to a teammate. That's that's nice. Is, do you think that's that's common in esports? Um, I'm not sure what other teams do, um, but you know we love David. I've played with him three, four years now, so he's a great guy, and uh, he's sort of in a tough situation with school, so um, it's definitely not a problem helping him out in that. All right, awesome. Uh, let's finish this off with a prediction. How far are you going to make it in the playoffs? Um, I have no idea. I'm not sure we play next. Um, I'm hoping top four. That would be nice for us. We'd like that, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. It'll just depend how we play. All right, Andrew, thank you very much for the interview and good luck in the playoffs. Thank you.